All let's right. uh, let's sound really hip. Okay, we'll say it. Oh my gosh. Okay. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. No. This lesson is brought to you by Borrow Lenses, a great resource for checking out gear that you don't necessarily own. Or if you need an extra lens or camera body for a shoot you got coming up, check out Borrow Lenses. Hi, this is J.P. Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on The Silent Lens, we're going to take a look at two great cameras, mirrorless cameras, that fall into that 2000 and just under range. This is the a7 III. And we have the Fujifilm X-H1. Both these cameras are great mirrorless cameras, but we're going to take a look at image quality, we're going to look at dynamic range, and just see how these two stack up with each other. Yeah, I'm really excited because I have always had a special place in my heart for Fuji cameras. Well, today we have Esmeralda Kaluna today. She's our model. And you can check her out at her Instagram here. She's going to be helping us to do our tests. So let's get started, see what we can do. Let's do it. So the first thing we're going to do is an image quality test. We're going to shoot this wall here. It's got our pub sign on it. Esmeralda's up on the balcony there. Then we're going to take Esmeralda and just do a tighter shot of her against the wall here. First one is just kind of more about image quality, right? Or like sensor yeah. quality. Yeah, like how, how does it react to the brick and the lines and resolution. Of course, like the lenses are gonna really be a big factor in the resolution. Lenses are gonna have a huge impact um, there. These, the Sony lens, this, we're using the 55 1.8, which isn't the like super nicest 50 millimeter they have. It's kind of their mid-range, it's not bad. And then we're using the, 50 mil, the 35 millimeter 1.4 for the Fuji. So it's a 50 millimeter equivalent because we have that crop sensor. The interesting thing is going to be one is full frame, one is crop. Yep. How do those two compare with each other? That's a great comparison yeah. because you always say this crop sensor is like every motion picture you've ever seen is on a crop sensor. <laughs> I, I don't find that there's like a, a massive difference between the two other than a little less depth of field. Well, they do get a little and, less and, depth And a little cleaner image, usually. Yeah. Um, but I've never been super bothered by crop sensors because all the cinema cameras I shoot on have crop sensors, so it's like, yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, the other thing, too, is you have the X-Trans, the, the kind of controversial Fujifilm X-Trans sensor in this camera, which uses a different, it's, a, it's not a Bayer pattern. All, the Sony and the Canon and the Nikon use Bayer pattern oh, sensors. Bayer, yeah. Um, this is not a Bayer pan pattern sensor, so it uses a different kind of technology to actually turn the raw data into an image. It'll be interesting to see if they stick with the sensor and they feel like that uh, that change has really been yeah. a positive move forward for them. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. But all right, let's take some images and see what they look let's like. Check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, the IQ test or the image quality test. This is the first one we're blowing up the P on here just to see what we get. And you know what's really fascinating to me is I can see in the Sony that there is, it's just a little crisper in the letters. I feel like the Fuji actually resolves a little more because I feel like I can see more of the grain, a little more micro contrast than the Sony, but that could definitely be the lens. Yeah, so, we're, we're dealing with a lens issue. We have on the best lens you can get on the Fuji. I think it is, yeah, for, for, the, what, for the native, for their, for you know, their their native. manufacturing. Yeah, but on the Sony, it's not necessarily the highest end Sony lens on there. Yeah, there there is one that costs twice as much. I'm shocked, but though, it's, that it's not more obvious. I'm shocked right, you're not going, oh, my right. word, that full-frame sensor is just so much better. Yeah, with these, with these lenses and these bodies, it seems very much like, eh, they're both great. You yeah. know, they both work well. So these are both shot at 2.8. Which, when you say it, it's, it, it is obvious that it falls off much faster on the, with the Sony, but when you say it falls off faster, it's not like this one isn't right, out of focus right, and this right, one right, is, right, you know? Right, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's, it's falling off difference. faster and it's, you can see the difference, but boy, look how sharp they both are. They're, and they're, all, they're both very, very sharp and yeah. the image quality looks excellent. I felt like the roll off on the, the uh, Fuji was much nicer. As it didn't far as fall the, into shadows. It didn't fall quickly, into shadows yeah. quickly. It seems like there was a much gra more gradual, softer roll from the shadows to the highlights. They both look super similar, like more similar than a lot of other cameras we've looked it's at. It's almost yeah. uncanny, doesn't it? The next thing we want to test is autofocus capability. The Sony always has, it's always been really strong in that area. The a7 III has 693 autofocus 693 points. 693 auto of frame to frame, pretty yeah, much. Clear to the edge as the eye tracking, which is awesome. We've had good, ex good experiences with that in the past. The Fuji only has up to 325 autofocus points, and we found that's only in single single focus, frame mode. Single frame mode. If you shoot continuous, um, then you're only using 91 autofocus like, points. It crops in. Yeah. You're really only getting the center of the frame. So for continuous, it's really a disadvantage. You're not getting frame to frame autofocus. 
it's just going to work in that center area. When you're doing that single shooting, it does have the eye, the eye detect. Mm -hmm. So we'll test that out, see how it compares. Uh, it is just a little bit disappointing that you can't use that when you're doing continuous shooting yeah. or burst mode. It's really set up for more a portrait situation where you, you have a person that's right there, your frame, I mean, if your hand holding even, this would be fine, but the person's right there and they're moving around a little bit and the, the focus is gonna follow their eye, you know, versus walking towards you, that's a much right. different animal. Eye focus is not gonna work on either of these cameras, they walk towards you very, very well, but it's really meant to be in that portrait situation where it just kind of keeps the eye in focus. So first we're going to do her walking towards us and just see how they both uh, fo you know, work in that continuous shooting, walking towards you. That's a, de that's a demanding autofocus situation because the mm -hmm. person is walking straight towards the camera. And then we'll just do some where she leans against the wall and is kind of moving around as we shoot. Yeah, a little more portrait style. Yeah. The hardest thing for cameras, we've said it before, is to have somebody walking straight towards you. Mm -hmm. That is hard. I think we blew this test a little bit because we shot at one 125th of a second. Yeah. And so we got a little motion blur in here. We were yeah. shooting fast and that... We, we had the settings from all the other setups yeah, and stuff. So. That was a mistake. We should have been at 500 of a second. So it kind of makes this test not real valid, you know, as she's mm -hmm. walking. But it is interesting. Two things that happen. One is that the, uh, the Sony is shooting a lot more frames. It's like 40 some odd frames in the same distance as the uh, Fuji that's yeah. getting like 23 half to 25. Many, yep. Almost, yeah. yep, almost half so as many. You have a lot more buffer on that Sony. Yep, a lot more buffer and it shoots quicker, doesn't slow down as much. And I overall mean, it does a really good job. I mean the Sony, I've, when when we were shooting it, the eye point was jumping around, you know, and I thought, I thought we were missing a bunch of frames for sure, but you look at them and we're hitting almost all of them. It's almost all of them. Really good job. It's hitting more than the Fuji is. The Fuji seems to be missing uh, more by, by a considerable amount. It's interesting when you go to the portrait, which is really, that's a, a test we've never done before, but that's just, it's more, it's handheld, it's the person's right there in front of you, they're leaning in, they're leaning back, you get the person's eye in the corner, and the Fuji was, was hitting a lot of them, but missing some of them when she would move in too yeah, quick. Yeah. Get up in the corners, we're missing some. But boy, the Sony was, it's almost 99%. It's all over. At mm -hmm. this speed of you doing a portrait, that eye, eye uh, detection is incredibly on. Yeah. And I thought I was, the Sony was, I was amazing. I was a little disappointed in the Fuji eye detect. Yeah. It seemed like it was still missing every fifth or sixth frame whereas the Sony is missing every 10th frame. You yeah, know? and we're shooting twice as many frames almost yeah. on the Sony, yeah. you know, so it's it's not even a fair comparison because we're shooting so much, so many more frames on the Sony that that eye detection, the autofocus and eye detection on the Sony is, is far superior, it seems to me. We want to do a dynamic range test like we usually do where we overexpose the image and underexpose the image and then bring them back in post, try and correct them and see which camera holds the highlights and the shadows better and just how the image processes overall. It's a great test just to be able to see how the sensor is going to handle that over or under. We've done it in the A7 III before and it's done very well, but let's just see how the Fuji holds up and see which one, uh, how they compare to each other. So let's take a look at the over under. There's our normal exposure. And you haven't adjusted color for these at all? I did adjust some color. A yep. little bit? Okay. I had to try to, otherwise the color just goes to pieces when you start pushing and pulling them. But this I month. mean on this this first one, the properly exposed one. No, this should be pretty clean out of the, out of the camera. Okay. I, it looks like I should have, but the Sony brought the, the uh, wides down just a little bit. It's a yeah, little bright. I'm noticing the color in the Fuji pops a lot more, like the sky and her dress mm -hmm. feel a lot more blue. Yeah, they definitely do. It's interesting when you go to minus one, I mean, we are still heading down the same road. I couldn't bring this brick wall in quite as easily with the, uh, the Sony. Huh, it's interesting. interesting, but I may have started with it a little bit too much. You know, I may have got, gotten out of control a little bit. Let's see if I get it back in here. There you go. So at minus two, I got that brick wall a little better on the, on the right hand side mm -hmm. with the Sony. But this is minus two, they're still holding. You got blue in the sky, but you have better blues, better color on the uh, yeah. Fuji. It's just a yeah. little clean, a little prettier color. When we go to, to uh, minus three. Yeah, minus three stops. I mean, it's still, it's you start to feel the grit a little bit in the image because you're pushing it a lot, but still not bad, not bad at all. And the Fuji's pretty clean as well. When you talk about, when you start to see it in her hair, you're seeing some of it break up there. But minus four, I mean, these digital cameras are okay with this. 
<laughs> I mean, it's this is not being exposed at all properly. No. <laughs> so you minus four stops, and the Sony is is. I mean, obviously the grain is starting to build. Her face is starting to break up. I would have expected a little more from the Sony because it's full frame. It's getting a little more light on the sensor, you know. Yep. But so let's have let's see what happens when we go to a plus exposure. So there's a plus one. Wow, that uh, Fuji. The brick wall starts to kind of go yellow. Yellow. Yep. I was really already. fighting to keep yellow out of all of these. I mean, it's just on the Fuji. On both of them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Pulling yellow out of both of them to be able to keep them. Yeah, that Sony, and we've seen this in the past. This uh, the Sony holds the highlights better than a lot of other digital cameras do. Way better. I mean, and look at the Fuji; it's falling apart at plus two. Mm. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it's just falling apart. Even even her face, and and she has a little bit of a darker complexion. Yep. And it's still kind of clipping on the Fuji. Yeah. So at plus three, it's. Clear winner. <laughs> uh, clear winner. There's no doubt about it. We're starting to look posterized with the Fuji, and the Sony is still holding some detail in the whites. Still some, not a lot, but right. You know, I mean, it, she looks fine. It's just that brick wall that's yeah. just blown out. When we go to really. plus four, the 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 Fuji's long, long gone, and the the Sony's pretty much gone too. I mean, you'd never but, really want to push probably past one stop over, but this shows how much more highlight retention the Sony has. Yep. over the Fuji. They, they look pretty similar in the shadows if you underexpose them, but when it comes to highlights, that somebody just has a lot more information. It does, and that's, that's probably you got a full frame sensor there. You have more information to gather, you know, and, and to keep, the, to hold things, so. Okay, so looking at the ISO test, there's 800 ISO. There's no reason to even look at anything until you get to 800. It's kind of what we determined, right? I'm almost starting to think there's no reason to look at anything until you get to 1600. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Although I do think it's interesting, if you look at the color, well, we've said this all along, the color is really nice on the Fuji. Yeah, it just kind of pops out at you. It does. It just is, is clean and a nice skin tone, whereas the Sony's not quite as warm and as nice. Yeah. And the, and the thing about that is, like, you can always manipulate an image in post, boost the saturation, change the tonality and stuff, but you have to start somewhere, and yep. you're always going to be building on where you start from, so. So it's not a bad place to start, but when we go to 1600? Still looking pretty clean. I'd say the Fuji might look a little cleaner than the Sony. Mm, perhaps. I can't tell what's noise and what's makeup, honestly. When we go to 3200, we're starting to break up a little bit now. Yeah, actually, I'd say the Sony's cleaner. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, definitely. Now we go to 6400. It's interesting, it's breaking up a little differently. The, the, uh, the Fuji is just feeling a little clumpier to me. The Sony seems like the grain's mm. there, but the grain's a little finer. Interesting, yeah. You know, and this is becoming, the artifacts seem a little larger, a little... Mm -hmm. Whereas in the uh, Sony, there's a little bit smaller. Obviously, when we go to uh, 12,800, which is as far as the, uh, the Fuji, Fuji goes, goes yeah. is the 12,800. I mean, and for good reason. I mean, both of these are still, they're looking pretty. The, again, the Fuji looks a little clumpier, though. It's it true. does. I w that might be an aspect of the crop sensor, you know. We're not getting quite as much detail with the... Right. Uh, yeah. Well, they're both 24 megapixels, but you're squeezing the same number of megapixels uh, pixels into a smaller space. Smaller space, yeah. So now we go to the uh, 256,000 on the... Uh, 20, 25,000. Uh, 25,000. <laughs> 256,000! That's not really. 25,600. And, I mean, we're just really breaking up, but right. the Fuji doesn't even go that far. It's kind of like, sometimes I wonder on these kinds of things, in, if you're in a situation where you really needed it, you would do it. But next, let's take a look at some of the video capabilities on these two cameras and how they compare with one another. We're going to want to shoot some standard stuff. The big thing here is this shoots 4K, which the, the last generation did on the Fuji, but now it has F-Log, which is their new flat profile if you want to shoot video. So we definitely want to at least take a look at that, what that looks like. We're set up with a really bright background here that's going to really test those logs to see what you can get when you grade them. So it'll make this worthwhile. Then I think we should look at some slow motion with our fan. Love that fan. So here we have the untouched footage from just the standard picture profiles on the Fuji and the Sony. They actually look remarkably similar. They do. Color-wise, they look very similar. Very similar. The Fuji seems a little more like green and yellow, which 
actually is kind of like Fuji film. Exactly. So you, would, <laughs> you would expect that. That does, that doesn't come as a surprise at all. It is interesting. Are the shadows that we see on her face in that uh, that standard image is that because of exposure or it's just much so more open? The, the Fuji is yeah, much the more Fuji's open. Yeah, the Fuji is much more open, and this is consistent. Sony is always darker. Well, it's more contrasty, too. Yeah. Look at the background. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just more contrasty overall. Mm -hmm. The Sony is. But yeah, the, the exposure was set identically on both cameras. Yeah, very much more contrasty. The log in both cameras is actually also very similar. You can definitely see the yeah. color difference. It's a lot more green with the Fuji. Yeah. Um, but you balance them. You, I just threw the Fuji and the Sony LUTs on there that they provide. They look pretty good. And made some simple adjustments, and they look... They both look really great. They both seem to capture about the same amount of dynamic range. You definitely more. see the same thing. You have more contrast with the Sony. You have a little more open with the Fuji. The Fuji's a little warmer. The, th the thing I like about the Fuji is that, um, and this is a problem I've always had with Sony S-Log, is that you have to overexpose the S-Log in order to get usable midtones. Otherwise, they're just too crushed. Whereas the Fuji seems to be keeping the midtones in the right spot, mm -hmm. but still getting that really flat image. Hmm. Here's the Fuji standard profile versus the Eterna profile. So Eterna is a film simulation they have. Yeah, so it's a little flatter. It's uh, the color's a little more muted. A little nicer roll off with the highlights. Uh huh. So here I just did um, some handheld shots with the Fuji camera. the The stabilization on this is actually incredible. I thought it was remarkably smooth. The thing I didn't like is that both the LCD and the viewfinder, I just could not. You're having a hard time focus. finding focus. So yeah, I look could at that. not tell what was in focus at all, and you you see me like searching for it. And of course, the the electronic lens doesn't help at all. Whoa! Look at the rolling <laughs> shutter. Holy cow! Yeah, the rolling shutter seemed like kind of normal for what you'd I expect. I guess. <laughs> But boy, that focus, it's more like the, see, it's much easier to focus that Sony, isn't it? Yeah. It's the, like the old Mark III was almost impossible yeah. to, to focus in video yeah. mode. And when you're shooting, I mean, the Sony has the full frame, so it's even more of a challenge. But I felt like on the Sony, I could kind of tell. I mean, at the end, I nail it. Yeah, at least you get there. Fine. It didn't seem like yeah. you'd ever get there with the, yeah. yeah, it's about the same, the rolling shutter. The rolling shutter it? seems about the same. Yeah. In the slow-mo test, we have the Fuji on the left, Sony on the right, and I was actually surprised by this one because I thought the Sony would win out. I'm a little bit biased, I guess. But if you look really closely, like around her ear and in her hair, the Sony has way more compression artifacts. Like if we pause it here and you look in her hair, it's just tons oh, of macro blocking. Yeah. And you don't really get, you don't get that, that with the Fuji with the Fuji. At all. The Fuji's got this really smooth... You know, it's like 1080, it's kind of like Mark III 1080p, yeah, you know, but yeah. it's, it's smoother, whereas the Sony's really just gritty. That's a very pretty image with the Fuji. Overall, what'd you think? What's your impression here? You know, I have several thoughts about this. First off, ergonomically, when you hold the Fuji, it's a little bigger mirrorless. It's not it as is. small as the Sony, so in your hand, because sometimes you feel that, like, I just can't, I don't have much to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Fuji's a little bigger, and you might feel like that's not a good thing. I think it's not a bad thing at all. It feels right in your hand. I love the old-fashioned dials. Yeah. You know, yeah. just they're tactile. You can change them. You, you see your ISO. You see your shutter. It's on the, the clicks on the lens. It's just that's just so the way I was used to to working. Then that just feels so intuitive to me and mm -hmm. very nice. I do think the battery is a huge problem. I don't understand creating a new camera today with a battery that is that, uh, that underperforms that much. Yeah, because we had shot for, what, four hours, three hours, and the battery was already pretty much dead. We yeah, and we were it. protecting it. We were yeah, trying, we were yeah, turning it off turn every on opportunity. Because we yeah. only had one battery, and we're going, if we're not careful here, yeah. we're going to be in trouble. You know, whereas the Sony's got that newer battery, and it, you know, we didn't even think yeah. about it. And it didn't even really deplete it, you yeah. know, very much. So I think, I don't understand making a camera this new with a battery that's insufficient. Mm -hmm. I think this doesn't make any sense. Um, I think the video was surprising to me that it was as good as it was. Yeah. yeah I thought the, the stabilization was fabulous. The color was nice. I don't understand trying to say we're a video camera, but you don't have a headphone jack to monitor audio. Yeah. I, I, that is the same category as the battery. Just It seems too inconsistent to me. I don't understand that. What was your thoughts? Were you... um, 
You know, I've always loved Fuji for their color. Mm -hmm. I just think there's something special about it that I don't see as much with some of the other brands. And I did see it here. You look at the ISO. I mean, it's a subtle difference, but there's a little more color in her face. You look at the dynamic range test, there's a little more color in those blues. Um, I like that a lot. I didn't love this Fuji camera, though, the way that I love the GFX or the way that I love my old X100 camera. I mean, I actually didn't like the size as much. I like the thing oh, yeah. I liked about the Fujis in the past. They're so compact. The X100 is really compact. Uh, I guess the others are all pretty big. The X Pro 2 is not that small, but um, I do like the tactile nature of it a lot more than the sort of computer digital nature of the Sony. Mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed having more dials and stuff. It felt more like a Nikon. Than felt like an old like star, old school yeah. Nikon, yep. Yeah. Old, old school film camera Nikon, yep. I did not like the EVF or the LCD. I thought they were <sighs> almost worthless. And you're comparing it to the A7 III, which doesn't have a great EVF right. to begin it's, with. It's it was, pretty good, but not great. You know, the A7R III yeah. is better. The I mean, it's just, it's, yeah. it wasn't, it's not a top of the line. That's a problem if you're doing video. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't see this as a video camera. I don't see it. I mean, mm -hmm. although the- The, uh, the, the F-Log was great. The F-Log like like was great and the slow motion was great. Yeah, and the slow motion. It's weird. It's a weird camera because there are these things about it that you're like, yeah, that's really good. I like that better than the competition I like. And you can't find those dials on any other camera. I mean, Nikon has a lot of functionality and adjustability, but it's a totally different game now. Yeah. So there are these little niche things, and I think that's why Fuji has this sort of niche market that always comes back to them is because they like those very specific aspects of working with the Fuji camera that you can't get anywhere else. But I think in most areas, it just, this camera at least, kind of fell short. Well, and here's the other thought that's concerning t to me, and the reason I've kinda, I have Sony cameras, I have Canon cameras, is the problem with the Fuji is this is, there's not a lot of other options. The limited lens selection, mm -hmm. you know, so it's kinda like you're, you know, there's nowhere else to go, right. whereas with, a lot of the Sonys with a lot of the Canon line things, there are lenses you can get. There's a lot better uh, selection lenses and things. So if you're going to make a decision, okay, I'm going to go with Fuji and I'm going to you know, make that my career. It's a big investment. It's a big investment and there's not a lot of options mm -hmm. lens-wise and things. And so it's going to mm -hmm. fall short. And you don't have people like you know, Tamron and you know, other cam companies, second uh, market uh, lens companies that are making stuff for, you know, for Fuji. I really feel like the Fuji cameras shine with their slightly lower end like the X100 or the X-T100 where you're, it's a smaller camera, it's not gonna have quite as many features but it still has a crop frame, still the same sensor. And so you're gonna use that for those niche uh, applications when you're traveling or when you're just doing, I think as a professional camera it just doesn't cut it quite as well as yeah. your, your Canons and Nikons and Sonys. So as a prosumer or maybe not even prosumer, as a just a, a high-end hobbyist, this would be a good camera, although for the price, it's pretty hard. The A7R, yeah. or the A7 III is just, it's couple such a great more. camera yeah. for a couple hundred dollars more, better battery life, you know, uh, expandability to other lenses and- More functionality. Among, more functionality, I mean, it's just, it's pretty hard. The autofocus was better. I mean, if you're a person that, do, that really depends on autofocus, I, you're, you're not gonna beat, the Fuji's not gonna beat right. out the Sony. Right. I would say there are more reasons to get the Sony than there are to get the Fuji. If I was gonna get a Fuji, I would go with one of the more affordable options. Well, I thought this was a great test. It was great to get out and use a Fuji again and to play with it. You know, it's it's just our opinion on where these are at and what's going on. And I'm sure we're gonna get hate mails from both sides of the fence on this one. That we, we weren't positive about either of them enough. Just trying to give you a our point of view and our thoughts. And when you gather all that information, it'll help you make the decision on what you should buy and what you should use. So just trying to be helpful in that process. Subscribe to our channel. It helps us to grow. It helps us to kind of keep ourselves moving forward. We need that kind of support from you. Leave comments. We love comments because it really gives us an idea of what you're thinking and gives us. it helps us to understand how to make these better in the future. And we're running out of things to review. So leave suggestions on comparisons or reviews that you would like to see. I've seen a couple cameras pop up here and, here and there, but um, really if there's something that we see a lot of people asking for, we will do that thing because people just aren't releasing cameras fast enough. That's right, that's right. But we are excited for the uh, Nikon uh, mirrorless that will come out hopefully soon. We'd love to see that and uh, some other great things in the market. So make sure you follow us on Facebook and uh, follow our Instagram. 
Connect us on all those platforms, subscribe to our YouTube. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. We're excited to give away two of FNV's K4000 lights. One's a bicolor and one's a daylight light. There's a two light kit you'll be able to take out and light the things you need to do in your video. So go to thesunlens.com backslash giveaway. You can sign up there to win. So go check it out. You should subscribe to The Slanted Lens. It may not save your life, but why risk it? Just push that button right there.